Morning, everybody. Welcome to morning prayer. Get yourselves ready now. Um, we're slightly before nine o'clock, so I won't begin until nine. So um, you've got a chance to get your cup of tea, cup of coffee, whatever, and um, get your service of morning prayer, and then we'll begin. So I hope you're well today, and um, it's good to be joining with you as together we pray. So it's just to nine o'clock. Let's pause and then we'll begin our prayers together. Let's keep our moments quiet as we invite the Holy Spirit to keep stillness. Lord Holy Spirit, we ask in the name of Jesus, to the glory of God the Father, that you would fill our hearts with your presence this day, that we will be strengthened in our faith, and that your will for our lives would be revealed this day. In that wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. So Tuesday the 23rd of March, it's um, Passion Tide, which is that season where we're quickly now approaching Palm Sunday, where we will remember that the great crowds who are gathered in Jerusalem for the Passover and how they cheer Jesus on. rejoicing and, and celebration is the fact that we know and Jesus knows that actually this is a journey that will take him to the cross. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Let your ways be known upon earth, your saving power among the nations. Blessed are you Lord God of our salvation, to you be praise and glory forever. As a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, your only son was lifted up, that he might draw the whole world to himself. May we walk this day in the way of the cross, and always be ready to share its weight declaring your love for all the world blessed be god father son and holy spirit blessed be god forever we turn to a song of lamentation it's actually from the book of lamentations itself is it nothing to you all who pass by Look and see if there is any sorrow like my sorrow, which was brought upon me, which the Lord inflicted on the day of his fierce anger. For these things I weep, my eyes flow with tears, for a comforter is far from me, one to revive my courage. Remember my affliction and my bitterness, the wormwood and the gall. But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that we should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. <coughs> for the Lord will not reject forever. Though he causes grief, he will have compassion. According 
to the abundance of his steadfast love, for he does not willingly afflict or grieve anyone. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. <coughs> Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. The first psalm today is Psalm 35, which um, has 29 verses, followed by Psalm 123, with only five verses. So um, two contrasting psalms in a way there, in terms of length and um, in terms of perhaps when they were written. Contend, O Lord, with those that contend with me. Fight against those that fight against me. Take up shield and buckler and rise up to help me. Draw the spear and bar the way against those who pursue me. Say to my soul, I am your salvation. Let those who seek after my life be shamed and disgraced. Let those who plot my ruin fall back and be put to confusion. Let them be as chaff before the wind, with the angel of the Lord thrusting them down. Let their way be dark and slippery, with the angel of the Lord pursuing them. For they have secretly spread a net for me without cause. Without any cause they have dug a pit for my soul. Let ruin come upon them unawares. Let them be caught in the net they laid. Let them fall in it to their destruction. Then will my soul be joyful in the Lord and glory in his salvation. My very bones will say, Lord, who is like you? You deliver the poor from those who are too strong for them. The poor and needy from those who would despoil them. False witnesses rose up against me. They charged me with things I knew not. They rewarded me evil for good to the desolation of my soul. But as for me, when they were sick, I put on sackcloth and humbled myself with fasting. When my prayer returned empty to my bosom, it was as though I grieved for my friend or brother. I behaved as one who mourns for his mother bowed down and brought very low. But when I stumbled, they gathered in delight. They gathered together against me, as if they were strangers I did not know, that they tore at me without ceasing. When I fell, they mocked me. They gnashed at me with their teeth. O oh Lord, how long will you look on? Rescue my soul from their ravages, and my poor life from the young lions. I will give you thanks in the great congregation. I will praise you in the mighty throng. Do not let my treacherous foes rejoice over me, or those who hate me without a cause mock me with their glances. For they do not speak of peace, but invent deceitful schemes against those that are quiet in the land. They opened wide their mouths and derided me, saying, we have seen it with our very eyes. This you have seen, O Lord. Do not keep silent. Go not far from me, O Lord. Awake, arise to my cause, to my defence, my God and my Lord. Give me justice, O Lord, my God, according to your righteousness. Let them not triumph over me. Let them not say to themselves, Our hearts desire. Let them not say, we have swallowed him up. 
Let all who rejoice at my trouble be put to shame and confusion. Let those who boast against me be clothed with shame and dishonour. Let those who favour my cause rejoice and be glad. Let them say always, Great is the Lord who delights in his servant's well-being. So shall my tongue be talking of your righteousness and of your praise all the day long. Well, there we are, Psalm 35. Clearly, there's somebody there who's calling out to God for justice in, in, and vengeance to say, look, what, what's happened to me is totally wrong. This has happened to me without without cause. Come on, God, do, do something about it. And, and I think um, what I would encourage every one of us in is the fact that the whole of human emotion is in the Psalms and it's expressed to God and that's okay and and um, God is able to deal with that um, I do have a however contrast this with thinking about Jesus Palm Sunday's coming up he's on his way to Jerusalem he enters the city um, in triumph the triumphal en entry but very soon the same crowd will turn nasty and some of them will be shouting crucify 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 and then those words of Jesus on the cross, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. And so I think the balance with that psalm and other psalms and other things we see in the Bible is actually um, commit justice into the hands of God and be honest with him about your feelings, honest with him about the sense of injustice and commit your way to him. So Psalm 123. To you I lift up my eyes, to you that are enthroned in the heavens. As the eyes of servants look to the hand of their master, or the eyes of a maid to the hand of her mistress. So our eyes wait upon the Lord our God, until he has mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy upon us, for we have had more than enough of contempt. Her soul has had more than enough of the scorn of the arrogant and of the contempt of the proud. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. And so, uh, a reading from Jeremiah. Uh, if I'm slightly distracted, it's because I'm just looking at the camera down there because <clears throat> there was somebody at the door. So <clears throat> you can tell this is live. This is actually happening now. And I think, have they gone away? Yes. If it's a parcel, they'll post something through the door anyway. Jeremiah chapter 22. Thus says the Lord, Go down to the house of the king of Judah and speak there, there this word. And say, Hear the word of the Lord, O King of Judah, sitting on the throne of David, you and your servants and your people who enter these gates. Thus says the Lord, Act with justice and righteousness, and deliver from the hand of the oppressor anyone who has been robbed, and do no wrong or violence to the alien, the orphan, and the widow, nor shed innocent blood in this place. For if you will indeed obey this word, then through the gates of this house shall enter kings who sit on the throne of David, riding in chariots and on horses, they and their servants and their people. But if you will not heed these words, I swear by myself, says the Lord, that this house shall become a desolation. Woe to him who builds his house by unrighteousness, and his upper rooms by injustice, who makes his neighbours work for nothing, and does not give them their wages, who says, I will build myself a spacious house with large upper rooms, and who cuts out windows for it, panelling it with, <clears throat> with cedar, and painting it with vermilion. Are you a king because you compete in cedar 
Did not your father eat and drink and do justice and righteousness? Then it was well with him. He judged the cause of the poor and needy. Then it was well. Is not this to know me, says the Lord? But your eye and heart are only on your dishonest gain. For shedding innocent blood <clears throat> and for practicing oppression and violence. Therefore, thus says the Lord concerning King Jehoiakim, son of Josiah of Judah. They shall not lament for him, saying, Alas, my brother, or alas, sister. They shall not lament for him, saying, Alas, Lord, or alas, his majesty. With the burial of a donkey he shall be buried, dragged off and thrown out beyond the gates of Jerusalem. This is the words, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A response, a refrain now based on Isaiah 63 before we have our next reading. I will recount the gracious deeds of the Lord and praises of the Most High. Who is this that comes from Edom, coming from Bosra, his garments stained crimson? Who is this in glorious apparel, marching in the greatness of his strength? It is I who announce that right has won the day. It is I, says the Lord, for I am mighty to save. Why are your robes all red, O Lord, and your garments like theirs who tread the winepress? I have trodden the winepress alone, and from the peoples no one was with me. I will recount the gracious deeds of the Lord, the praises of the Most High, all that God has done for us in his mercy, by his acts of love. For God said, surely they are my people, my children, who will not deal falsely. And he became their saviour in all their distress. So God redeemed them by his love and pity. He lifted them up and carried them through all the days of old. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. I will recount the gracious deeds of the Lord, the praises of the Most High. We now have a reading from um, John's Gospel, chapter 11. Um, beginning at verse 45, and then going to the end. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and seen what Jesus did, believed in him. But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what he had done. So the chief priest and the Pharisees called a meeting of the council and said, What are we to do? This man is performing many signs. If we let him go on like this, everyone will believe in him. And the Romans will come and destroy both our holy place and our nation. But one of them, Caiaphas, who was high priest that year, said to them, You know nothing at all. You do not understand that it is better for you to have one man die for the people than to have the whole nation destroyed. He did not say this on his own, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus was about to die for the nation, and not for the nation only, but to gather into one the dispersed children of God. So from that day on they planned to put him to death. Jesus therefore no longer walked about openly among the Jews, but went from there to a town called Ephraim in the region near the wilderness, and he remained there with the disciples. Now the Passover of the Jews was near, and many went up from the country to Jerusalem before the Passover to purify themselves. They were looking for Jesus and were asking one another as they stood in the temple, What do you think? Surely he will not come to the festival, will he? Now the chief priest and the Pharisees had given orders that anyone who knew where Jesus was should let them know, so that they might 
arrest him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And there it is in the middle of this text that um, we're looking at in John's Gospel. The words of those who are the leadership, the the council, the Sanhedrin, the Jewish ruling council, and almost um, unwittingly <laughs> recognizing on one level that if Jesus is allowed to continue in the way that he's ministering, everybody will believe in him. Now, as as followers of Jesus we would say yes and that's great and that's exactly the way it should be because uh, not only is, is he our saviour you know he is the longer way to Messiah for, for the Jewish people but he's not just come for the nation of Israel yes he's come for them to fulfill all the prophecies and say yes I'm your Messiah but he's come for the whole world surely this is a good thing that everyone believes in him what are we to do this man is performing many signs. If we let him go on like this, everyone will believe in him. Amen, we would say. And today's reading picks up the narrative because prior to this, John chapter 11, um, and I'm sure many of you know, is that passage in the Bible which records Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. And... John's Gospel is known for its signs, you know, Jesus changing water um, into wine, you know, in, in chapter two. And um, it's marked by its miraculous signs. And here we have, as it were, things coming to a head in terms of who is this Jesus? Uh, and Jesus will make some great statements in John's Gospel, you know, prior to this, the great um, I am statements, you know, I, I am the bread of life and I am the good shepherd and um, before Abraham was, I am using, um, uh, you, you know, uh, the biggest hint you could give the I am the personal name of God, um, as it was um, shared with, with Moses when Moses said, who are you and who shall I say sent me? And, and God said, I am who I am or I will be who I will be. And to use the phrase, I, I am before Abraham was, I am, Jesus says, that the Jews knew that Jesus was identifying himself with the personal name of God and therefore with God himself, which no ordinary person couldn't do. And to the point where if we fail to understand that the Jews knew what he was talking about, it says they picked up stones to stone him, but it wasn't Jesus' time. And so for, so things are coming to a head, and, and here we are. For those who were there on that day, Lazarus had, had been in the tomb for four days, uh, and according to um, the teaching of the rabbis, you know, somebody could um, be raised after three days. It could be, you know, if it was a miracle, they would be raised after uh, three days. But after four days, it was impossible. That's what they believed. And, and that was partly the teaching about, about the resurrection, and, and the coming Messiah. And so Jesus purposely waits, knowing that Lazarus has already died, or he will be dead by the time he gets there, and it will be the fourth day, and Jesus raises him from the dead. And of course, Bethany, not that far from Jerusalem, you can imagine, if you saw somebody raised from the dead, who not died recently you know so you couldn't turn around and say oh well they must have been in a coma somebody's been dead for four days they've been embalmed with with the ointments and wrapped in bandages as, as they were according to Jewish tradition and placed in the tomb and a stone rolled over the entrance and and it even says in that passage earlier on in chap chapter 11 um, as, you know it's really graphic it says, um, Jesus says, take away the stone, but, but Rabbi, there will be an odour because he's been dead for four days. This is a dead man raised from the dead. And of course now, as we approach Passover, there will be thousands of Jewish pilgrims pouring into Jerusalem. Gentiles as well, those who were God-fearers, would pour into 
Jerusalem to worship at the temple. And right in the middle, to us, these strange words, <laughs> if we let him go on like this, everyone will believe in him. And so there is a choice. There is a choice every single day in terms of our walk with Jesus. Do we fully identify with Jesus? Or are there circumstances sometimes in our life where we think, oh, you know, shall I keep quiet that I'm a Christian? Or, oh, shall I just keep my head down and keep moving and not let anyone know? Or, or you, you know, sort of keep, keep it a bit quiet and, and, and to ourselves because actually that will be the best thing to do for, for now and, and there is a serious situation here in Jerusalem 2000 years ago because to slightly sympathize with the Jewish leadership on one level with that many people in Jerusalem if they start following Jesus and with that powder keg of people, and if people start shouting things like Messiah, then Jerusalem could very quickly turn from a place of pilgrimage into a place of revolution, <laughs> and, and a place where let's make Jesus king, and a place where there could be potentially all at war with the Romans, and, and, and the leadership trying to just keep that balance between as long as we cooperate with the Romans, we're allowed to worship at the temple. But if we're involved in any way as, as a Jewish people with something that looks like a rebellion, even if it isn't, then the possibility is that the Romans could come and destroy even the temple. And if that happens, the temple is the place where it was believed that God manifested his presence. If there's no temple, how are we to access God? And so we look back as Christians and say, well, of course, Jesus is the saviour of the world. But at the time, they're still working through the implications of who Jesus is. And so what are we to make of this? Well, in the midst of um, what looks like a political and military situation in Jerusalem with the occupation of the Romans and with all the politics of that, and with all the humanity that's mixed into it, God still works his purpose out. Jesus is meant to come to Jerusalem. Jesus is meant to be arrested. Jesus is meant to be put on trial. Because Jesus knows he's heading to the cross. And he will have to go to the cross. Because unless he does, this kind of political situation where there's uproar, where people are fighting for justice, will just continue throughout history again and again and again and again and again. And some people will say, well, have, have I not been watching the news? Have I not seen the riots and the unrest in, in Britain, people protesting about the, the lockdown? And uh, have I not um, seen or heard about the riots in um, Myanmar? Uh, you know, have I not been watching the news? Of course I have. But because Jesus has come and because he has died on the cross because he has been buried and raised from the dead and resurrected and ascended on high a mighty saviour seated at the right hand of the father it won't go on forever there will be a day where god says enough and ultimately ultimately jesus is lord and jesus is lord and the beautiful thing is despite politics and despite what the world's doing and despite the circumstances that we live in we're not just waiting for the the great day of salvation yes we are but every day that we follow jesus he is lord of our lives and despite the mess of the world that we see around us when we commit ourselves to him his will and his purpose for our lives will be worked out and that is the wonderful thing about being a Christian, that whatever happens, we belong to God, we're kept by God, and God has a purpose for our lives. And part of that purpose is that we invite other people onto this journey to follow Jesus, because the future belongs 
to him. And so in a world 2000 years ago to the observer, which might have looked like chaos and all hell breaking loose, God was in control. And to a world today where sometimes we look and we think it's chaos and all hell is breaking loose, God is in control and he has a plan for you and for me today. Amen. Let us pray. And so Lord, we thank you as the words of the traditional hymns say, through all the changing scenes of life. You are the Lord, you are the sovereign. We're not rescued from this world. We live in this world and yet we're kept by you in this world for your purposes. And we thank you that in the midst of the, the politics and, and the leadership issues that there were in Jerusalem 2000 years ago, your plan and purpose was worked out. And so we know that in the midst of this world in which we live, despite the decisions of people, your plan and your purpose will be worked out. So fill our hearts with faith and confidence this day in the name of Jesus. Amen. We continue with words of response based on um, 1 Corinthians and Galatians chapter 6. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your holy cross you have redeemed the world. God shows what is weak in the world to shame the strong. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. We preach Christ crucified, the power of God and the wisdom of God. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. The Song of Zechariah from Luke chapter 1. The word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to those who are being saved, it is the power of God. Blessed be the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. A new child shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to those who are being saved, it is the power of God. Let us pray. Oh, so Lord, as we have heard there the words of Zechariah, may we be those who in our own lives this day are those who prepare the way for the Lord, who say that the Saviour is coming. The Saviour has come, but he's coming again. May we be those who are ready for that day when the Lord returns. And until that day, May we be serving you, walking in the fullness and fulfilment of your will and purpose for our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As the crowds gathered for that Passover 2000 years ago, we pray for your blessing upon the Jewish community as they prepare for Passover. We pray for the day when all will acknowledge Jesus as Lord and Messiah and Saviour. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray for the peace of the world. We pray for peace for this nation in which we live. We commit to you, Lord, those situations in this nation. We pray for your wisdom especially and for your blessing upon Her Majesty the Queen and her government. 
that day by day through this past 12 months, they've made decisions about finances, vaccines, numerous decisions and carried the weight of this nation. And so we pray for your wisdom upon those who lead us, your grace, your strength, your guidance through the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your blessing and guidance for those who lead your church, for our archbishops, Justice, uh, Justin and Stephen. We pray for our bishops, Julian, Philip and Jill, and our archdeacons, Mark and David, that they would know the anointing of the Holy Spirit as they lead your people in the Church of England and in this diocese. May we be a diocese and a church here in Lancashire and across this nation that declares with confidence the good news of Jesus. And so I pray for your church that we would walk in the resurrection power of Jesus, that we would see the wonderful work of the Holy Spirit in our daily lives and that we would be empowered to share this wonderful love with our family, our friends and our neighbours. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for those today that need the miracles of Jesus. Those who need healing. Those who need the comforts, who are bereaved. And for them, this is a difficult day. Those who need your peace. We pray that you would show yourself with signs and wonders and compassion. In the silence of our hearts, we bring to you those for whom we wish to pray for this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we pray today for those who care for those who are struggling. We commit to you the work of New Comfort Zone as they feed those who are homeless, they feed those who are struggling, as they feed those who are in need. Bless the team and bless those whom they serve this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And in the silence of our hearts, let us commit to Almighty God this day ahead and the things which we need to do this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You collect the prayer for today. Most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, delivered and saved the world, grant that by faith in him who suffered on the cross, we may triumph in the power of his victory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Standing at the foot of the cross, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. So, have a good day. Um, remember, um, night prayer recorded from last night. Um, morning prayer coming up on Thursday. Night prayer on, on Friday. And um, live streaming for those who are not able to um, come to church on Sunday. May Christ who bore our sins on the cross set us free to serve him with joy. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. God bless you all and see you soon.